Next thing, let's look at what are the things we can do to increase our self-approval, our self-appreciation, our self-acceptance. Here's number one, love yourself. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. Take care of you. Look out for what truly satisfies you. We're not taught to love ourselves. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, to our needs, our, our desires. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority, your peace of mind. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have peace of mind, if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. A lot of us, and particularly ladies, have been groomed to be sacrificial lambs, putting their dreams on the back burner in deference to their children's dreams or their husband's dreams or their family's dreams, and forget about themselves. And then become resentful and angry and bitter. So start taking care of yourself, looking out for you. Develop a health plan. Your health is all you got. So start taking care of you, eating nutritious meals, willing to exercise your body, taking care of this body, loving yourself. So do some good stuff for yourself on purpose. Take some time out for you. I'm into meditation. I've been working and, and exercising now, just doing some things for me, taking care of myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and physically. You can't develop and manifest your greatness. You can't be a high achiever if you don't feel good. Become aware of what your needs are and develop compassion towards yourself despite your human defects. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. Hello. <laughs> you will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've done a lot of dumb, stupid things. Guess what? You're not through yet. <laughs> You're going to do some more. Hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> it's all right. You've got to learn to be gentle with yourself. Make it all right. What you don't know, mistakes that you make. It's okay. Handle it. Learn from the experience. Decide that you are going to whatever you become involved in to be up front, to be true to yourself. Are you getting what you need out of it? And be upfront with people and tell them what you need from them. Don't assume that they know. Don't say, I thought you knew. No, tell people up front. Here's what I need from this in order for this to work for me. Be upfront with your stuff. Tell them up front so they're not surprised later on. So your feelings aren't hurt later on. See, if they tell you up front they can't do it, now you know you can keep on stepping. But tell people up front, here's what I want. In order for me to play this game with you, if we're going to dance, this is what i got to get out of it. See, if you don't take care of your needs, guess what? You will always have that nagging song in the back of your mind say, well, when do I get mine? When am I going to start enjoying this? Are we going to have a good time together? Do I get any oodles out of this at all? You're going to start asking that question. Everybody's happy and having a good time, but you... They said, well, we thought you were happy. How could you think that? Well, you weren't saying anything. Well, I'm saying something now. Hope you got that. <laughs> See, we're taught to be quiet and not speak up for ourselves and not to be selfish. If you don't take care of you, who do you think is going to take care of you? Who's going to look out for you better than you will? No one. No one's going to do that. You got a business? No one's going to take care of your business better than you. Nobody. Nobody. Anything you want to do in life, you've got to take ownership of it and say, hey, I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> Next thing is avoid people and situations that upset you. Hello? <laughs> See, there's some people that know just how to push your button. They know just what to say. So, you know what? I don't even deal with them. I just avoid, excuse me. Hey, hey um, I want to talk about something. I, I understand, excuse me. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> now, you might call that cowardly. 
But I'm not going to expend any energy arguing with anybody. Life is too short, ladies and gentlemen, and unpredictable. I don't want to spend my time arguing with anybody. So I avoid situations that will get me upset. I don't argue with people. I avoid things. I don't look at movies that, that frighten me. Last fright movie I saw was The Exorcist. I never saw another one after that. I never forget going home. At that time I was married and I was blowing the horn, going up into the driveway. I said, open the door. I pull up, open the door to get out, and I said, oh, Lord, they got me. I started blowing the horn. My wife said, unfasten your seatbelt, fool. I said, oh, all right. <laughs> that movie scared me out of my wits. So I don't look at scary movies. I'm one of the people in a scary movie like this. Tell me, tell me what's happening now. Tell me what's happening. I threw popcorn all over everybody. That girl was spitting on those people. I don't do that. No, 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 no. No, so I, I slept in the house with lights on all over the house for two weeks. I was embarrassed. But your children said, Daddy, turn the lights off. No. So I don't do, I just avoid things. I go see comedies. I love Danny DeVito and Steve Martin. I like things that make me laugh, make me feel good. I like the little boy in me. Life is just too serious. Here's something else that can help to increase your self-esteem. Draw the line, ladies and gentlemen. There are certain things that we just go through life just taking, and at some point, you just got to draw the line and just say enough is enough. You got to do that with yourself. Just draw the line. You know, there, see, when I, how I manage my, my food choices, I get on scale every day. If I get to a certain level, that's a crisis level. I just get down, start doing setups right there. That's right. Look at, hey, right away. <laughs> if, I, if my income dropped to a certain level, I go crazy. I start working like, you see this callus on my ear? You see that callus right there? <laughs> that's how that callus got there. You know, my income dropped. And I made 200 calls a day as punishment. Don't you ever let this happen again. Because I'll never, never, never be broke again. So you got to draw a line. You just got to draw. There's certain things that you just don't permit. If you got negative people in your life, just one. So look here. I was talking to someone I loved very much, had a just dynamic relationship with us. So look here. I can't grow from that. If you're persistent in saying those kind of things to me, I'm saying to you right now, I won't tolerate that. And I will terminate this because I'm not going to expose myself to this type of humiliation. I don't like that. I don't like getting called in names and putting each other down. I don't like that. Come back to me, I'm sorry. No, I won't get it. So you put a nail in a hole, you make that impression, you pull a nail out, that mark is still there. That's not for God. We can't extract that from the record. So don't, don't say that to me. So we were talking about something else. Person said it again, boom, you are a loser. Very good. And you are too, because you just lost a very good friend. I don't choose to be around you anymore. And that was it. I said, that's cool. Maybe it is. But I get people out of my life that aren't good for me. One negative stroke is 16 times more powerful than a positive stroke. And if you have people around you who are not sensitive to who you are, and the people that can hurt you the most, ladies and gentlemen, are the people that you love, that you love. They're the ones that you're vulnerable to. They're the ones that can get to you. And if they're insensitive, I don't care who they are, See, if you don't draw the line with people, if you just let them run rampant in your life and you let things happen to you that you don't feel good about, if you continue to allow it to happen, you won't feel good about yourself. Your image of yourself will erode. So you've got to draw the line in the conditions that you find yourself in. Here's a jarring question. Why are known hells preferable to strange heavens? Why would people live in a known hell? Why do people just go to a job where they're miserable day in and day out? Why do people stay together and they're miserable, sleeping in separate rooms? 
are arguing are the only thing they have in common is paying the bills. Don't talk, don't communicate, don't share anything together. Day in and day out, as short and unpredictable that life is, being mean to each other. Why do people do that? Known hells are preferable to strange heavens. What's the next thing? Learn something new and tackle it in a spirit of adventure and love. Somebody said that we are not stricken by the things we do, but we are stricken by the things that we don't do. The songs that have not been sung, the poems that we have not written, the work that we have not done, the ideas that we have not developed, the dreams that we have not acted on. That's what can stricken you. That's what can block your power. That's what can rob you of your peace of your satisfaction, of your self-respect, of this special joy that you can get out of life, of special achievements. See, one of the things that contributes to, to high self-acceptance or self-approval is self-achievement. When you achieve something, when you've done something, and you can stand back and look at it and say, I, I did this. What if it doesn't work out? You can stand back and look at it and say, I tried it. I went up in there. I went with it. Didn't work out. No, no, I, no but I, I value the experience. I love just the experience of doing it. I love that. So that's why I said, wait a minute, I've been fantasizing about singing. <laughs> so I'm going to do this. Who says that at, when I first stand up, I got to sound like Pavarotti? What's the guy's name? I don't have to sound like him. I didn't sound like less. That's right, maybe Brown's boy. <laughs> see, see, you got to look at you and look at your life and find something that you can tackle and do it with love. Only that which you love. Only that which you love. Let me tell you something. When you do that, you're doing it in a spirit of love. Just love it. Make <laughs> can you can you tell I love this? <laughs> I love it. See, I know that there's greatness in you. I know that there's something in you. Everybody has something. I don't know what it is, but you know it's something. You know it's something in you that you want to do. Everybody's got some ideas. I say to you that as you focus on something, as you go into action, as you hold that thought in consciousness persistently, you begin to develop the consciousness to manifest and create all kinds of things. You will begin to realize powers and abilities you have you will realize you have miracle working power in you that that when you move that when you walk folk will see you when you come in the room and say there i don't know what it is but there's something different about you there's something about the way you look it's it's a glow about what is it huh? what, what, are you, what are you doing now um i'm just being who i am i'm i'm just living out my greatness i'm i'm approving myself and giving myself permission to pursue my dream ladies and gentlemen Pursue your dream. Pursue your greatness. It's there. I know it's there. I'm waiting on you to come on out here and join me. This is Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy, Leslie Calvin Brown, saying it's been a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. Thank y'all here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.